map number one on Echo Isles here in this King of Maps. Best of one. This is the round of eight, so the quarterfinals. And we have our new hero overlay working on NetEase as well. In the upper left, we have Jamiko. The resources are wrong, though. Now it's better. Players forces are under attack. And he opens with the Mountain King first. I really like that. It's a little more action-packed. Same time as the Death Knight pops out. So on this side, we have a Late Fiend opening with an harassing DK. And since the Acolyte was scouting this movement, he knows that Chimiko is going for this... Uh, uh oh This mercenary camp and the Shadow Priest got stolen, immediately killed. But that means no healing for this Mountain King. It's pretty rough already for the human, and only now the Death Knight is coming in. Is this live or replay? This is live! So he has to TP out after killing the big one. This camp is not cleared, and there is no shop, so... Everything is hurt already for Chimiko. PCG forces the town portal only with his presence of the DK. Not a single coil has been used this far. And a skeleton is coming in for some kills. Looks quite juicy here, but nice reaction surrounding the skeletons here. But coils are coming, more skeletons are coming. Was this TP a little too premature? I don't know. He got the level, he got the item, and he didn't want to lose more footmen. I think it's okay. I think it's fine. Fast tech by PCG, one of the upcoming stars in the Undead Lady roster. We haven't seen too much of TBC recently, so he fills that spot for sure. And WFZ also thought about retiring, but uh, not doing that as far as I know. Gloves of haste for the Mountain King, always right, but the arrest continues and there's a slaughter going on. Two kills already from those skeletons. Chimiko skipping on the Arcane because he wanted to uh, or because he prefers the tech over security and that can bite you in the ass sometimes and now the mercenary camp is kind of open there's only a few little creep jumps he's, he's luring them out not going for another mercenary here though a town is under siege and the arras continues this is a little bit experience as well for the mountain king who finally clears this one and who finally gets the shadow priest He does have a decent amount of footmen, so he can deal with the first fiends, I guess, especially with Stormbolt. And the tech is rather okay, but he's on one base. Here on Echo Elves, you can expand, I guess, because the expansion is going to be so far away from the undead base, but we have quite a few fiends here, not doing any damage, and also the DK progress. It's not too much. It's three footmen. Uh, three passants, I'm sorry. Forces are under attack. Trying to get another kill here. Oh, this poor peasant here has to cancel the blacksmith as well and gets another kill, even though the arcane tower is up. He's not insta click And another one! So now that's six. He is on tier two, so he got a little bit of extra experience. Lich is coming as well. More fiends. We're just waiting for the slaughterhouse in his base. And then the pressure gets real, man. The Mountain King finally got level three, though. And with Storm Bolts, he should be able to defend this finally, but only now going for the Blacksmith again. A player's forces are under attack. Ah, this early game hurt Ch Chimiko quite a bit, but it's not over, not by far. Since TBC is staying on tier 2 here, doesn't have the gold at the moment, and is not going for Slaughterhouse. Oh, he's supply stuck! That's so bad. I mean, he had a very good er early game, but... Only level 2 after this one, no slaughterhouse, and not able to make more fiends. And he's not taking to tier 3 only now. That's a big macro mistake. A player's forces are under attack. In my opinion. But okay, level 2. Pendant of energy for the Mountain King here. Very nice, he bought that. At the mercenary camp, so a lot of gold went into this. He also got the Wend of Mana Stealing, the only big consumable on this map. 
Did I say TBC? I meant PCG, of course. Confusing with only three letters. Going hard on the clap. Has to speed things up. Nova onto the Berserk. Another the creep. So Chimiko gets the big one. Level four on his side. But two units are hurt. Including this Mountain King. Who doesn't have a town portal anymore. Also no invul. He's trying to buy some more time. But ah uh ah. -uh, Coil Nova. The parry up actually helps him. But not against this Frost Shard. From the Lich. So he dies. And on level four. That's so expensive. Chimiko has 500 gold. Rebuys the Mountain King immediately. But this delays his tier two hero oh, by a lot. Lot. And also, it's good. Oh, he actually gets him back from the tavern. That costs even more, but at least he has uh, the slot freed up for a second hero, but no gold. That was that was super rough. Creepjack by PCG. Worked well. And now he's clearly ahead. Like, no chance for Chimiko to go for an expansion. Slaughterhouse is up, so the statues are coming. Tier 3 is three quarters done as well oh and that lich looks scary two claws already you all know it on echo isles so many claws mountain king is scouting to see the movement but tbc now pcg moving into enemy territory and stealing some experience there to prevent the level five mountain king i really like that there's still the murlocs or oh, nova hitting everything and so many mercenaries already killed And that was yet another level up. You see it on your overlay. Or was it? Yeah. Level 3. Finally. That was a big one then. So we do have level 2 coil. We do have Nova. And the statue is there now. Destroyer upgrade comes in a bit. Backpack upgrade as well to bring the orb. So we know it's not gonna be a... Altar hero for the undead. Which is quite normal. And on Chimiko's side, man... Yes, level 4 Mountain King is strong, but apart from that, he only has a few footmen. Now the Blood Mage is coming in. Very rare choice. Stormbolt and Siphon Mana, good combo. Can't get the surround off, but... There was a lot of mana used here, and Shimiko is trying to expand. On tier 2 with oh, only rifle casters, hard. when the big destroyer push is coming. Wait, is something wrong? Oh, that's not the real blood mage image. Okay, I will swap that out then. Yeah, I will fix that then for next cast. Please leave a note on our Discord if you see uh, mistakes like this. We're still in the testing phase for this overlay. Oh, third claw! And a circlet! And the orb! Plus 25 damage! And this Blood Mage, rather squishy. Armor is low now. And there's only one Priest, one Rifleman. And no level 5. This is so rough for Chimiko. He has to stall time. Call Nova on the Illusion. Big mistake. But a nice Stormbolt Siphon combo. So there's no healing at the moment. But level 3. One. With all those squishy units, man, how does he want to survive against this Lich? He needs to disable the Lich somehow. Trying to now. To get at least rid of one Nova, but I don't think that's working. Nice clap with this big AoE. Walking into all the fiends, but revenge is coming. Coil Nova on the Blood Mage. There's no healing for him, no staff as well. And this Blood Mage is... Almost falling, but the Black Arrow not enough. Does not really open up... A move to kill this MK, though. I mean, there are right clicks. Wow, there's the fourth claw. Holy shit. This damage of the Lich is insane. And Disease Cloud coming. So, Abominations. Expansion for Chimiko is up, though. Can he go into tier 3 somehow? Going. Oh my god. Long rifles upgrade only now. 41 supply only. In case you're wondering, I don't have that hero overlay. It's just for you. So I still have to check stuff. And sometimes I might not know stuff that you see already. But yeah, this expansion is very exposed. PCG scouts it now. There's not a single tower. There's nothing like a farm or a blacksmith or a shop that could help him in the defense. 
Shimiko scouts the counter expansion immediately. PCG already at 50 supply. More mercenaries for the Korean. Breaking up keep now. One potion on the Blood Mage. One invul and the heal scroll on the Mountain King. But is that gonna be enough? So many skeletons already from those mercenaries. The clap has to do it. Whoa, that was nice. Can he pick up the skeletons to at least diminish the damage and then trying to kite a little? Distract him from this. Uh oh, Coil Nova, Invo Potion last second. But I don't think he can hold this, man. This looks so rough. Silence on the castles in the back. Not, not on the Blood Mage, nor on the Mountain King. If there's another nuke coming, then this MK is dead. Whoa, the Nova again into everything. And since this Mountain King is not able to go into melee range again. What can he do? Just tap out, GG! And that's our first match of the day. Already over, PCG advancing into the semi-finals of King of Maps Echo Isles. Nice to see an undead there, but a little unfortunate for Chimiko. This scouting of PCG and then the harass very early on hurt a lot. Like, the town portal early, damn. So rough to get back from this. And then the late tag. Um, ah, not too many chances here for Chimiko after this early, but well played by PCG, a little macro mistakes there, um, slipping a little with the tier 3 and the slaughterhouse, but that's about it, I think. It was, was a pretty decent game. His opponent in our next match will be Focus versus Colorful, looking forward to that a lot. Focus making it to the quarterfinals of WGL as well as Colorful. Both eliminated there though against uh, Lin and Infi. But Focus very, very good at the moment. Colorful very good versus Org. This will be uh, a very good game. We're looking forward to that. This is the second quarterfinal of the day between these two players. Focus and Colorful. Once again, China versus Korea. Korea was defeated in the first quarterfinal here. So Focus has to make up for that in a nice Orc versus Night Elf. Sorry about that. Very, both players very good against their opponent's races. So this is one of the best ma uh, best games that we could hope for in this matchup. So let's see what they are capable of doing. Who will face PCG in the semifinals of King of Maps? Echo Isles 2. Again, the rate... Uh, it's reverted. There we go. Now it's fixed. Zip. We see focus on the upper left. Focus on the upper left, opening up with the Blade Master here. Colorful on the other side. What a surprise! The Keeper of the Grove. Who needs these kind of overlays? If you're new to the game, it's so helpful. In fights, it's so helpful to see who has an invul and who not. And especially with the newer patches, um, I feel it's very important to see what the skill build is. I mean, for, uh, for Alchemist, we oftentimes don't know if it's Heal Spray 2, is it Acid Bomb 2, did he go for Chemical Rage, same, same for the Shadow Hunter. We don't really know if it's Serpent Wards, if it's Heal Wave, Hex, whatever it is. For Archmage, sometimes we don't know if it's Blizzard or whatever. And isn't it cool to have all I inventories at the same time displayed, so you're not dependent on the caster to see the inventory? And especially if you join a game late, you have the information about what happened already in the game. Seeing the inventory, seeing the levels. No. For die-hard Warcraft fans, it might not be that important. For newer fans, super important. So, Keeper makes his way over. It's your job as a caster to point this out, though. Yeah, but I can't point this out all the time. <laughs> like, forces are under attack. If I just pointed it out and then you tune in, then what? Then you miss the information. And with that, it's way more convenient. But I guess uh, people will get used to it. When we introduced names and colors and races, 
to broadcasting in Warcraft, people said the same. Like, you can just move the mouse Their over the attacked. units. You see the Nick. Nick. Okay, man. Okay. Also, timers and resources. You can click on buildings to see the information. Yeah, you can, but why not display it all the time? So, Colorful, staying on tier 1, going for an expansion, Focus scouts this all the time. Gets a little help from the uh, creeps here, being, being stunned first, then entangled. This is no damage at all against the expansion, so Focus has to retreat. Did not use the heal self before. So he's not healing up at the moment. Maybe he can steal something, a Shadow Priest. It's still available. Shadow Priest would be so helpful right now. It's off cooldown. He's luring the creeps to attack. Uh oh, the Keeper's coming in again, but Windwalk. And now the creeps are attacking. That is a lot of damage. Focus playing uh, with the neutrals very, very nicely. Thank you. I look after yous. Thank you. Nice nickname as well for the sub. So tier 2 is done. Colorful is still at tier 1. The expo got attacked and is down to 60%. Keeper is not level 3. Far away from level 3 ac actually. Not going for another entangle. Had the mana. Alright. Wisp scouts this. Shadowhunter is coming and the Torrent Totem Beastery. No special lodge play. And Focus is coming in for the steal. Is revealed by the owl though. And revealed by the dust. Maybe he walked out of range, but now he knows. Focus, can he get this one? It would be so big for him. Windwalk is enabled. Backstep is coming. Oh, the entangle. So nice. And now he kills the ogre. <laughs> nice steal by Focus, though. Getting the claws of attack and the trifactor is complete. So lots of damage now for the orc. And still far away from level 3 is the keeper. But Huntress are coming. Makes the Night Elf a little more stable in the early mid game. I'm still surprised that he's not going for attack. Okay, there we go. Tree of Life is moving over. He should be in range. Yes. And finally some creeping for the Blade Master and the Shadow Hunter alike Please getting oh, Talisman of Evasion. Meh item. But alright. Okay. Big tech advantage. A little late on that beastery though. Two Hunters only and close to level 3 on the Keeper, but I think Focus did a good job of preventing level 3 for a long time. Second Engine of War coming in now. We have Owls basically everywhere. So this makes the stealing for the Blade Master a little harder. Treants can easily creep these Berserkers thanks to normal damage, especially in combination with the Hunters. So the first unique spot goes to Colorful, but Focus not really knowing this, but assuming it goes for the 12 o'clock. That's good. Sentry Ward, so helpful though. What is this item here? The Wisp is coming in for the steal. Oh, not for the steal, but for the scout. Scroll of the Beast. Usually Night Elves bring Wisps to the fight nowadays. So that shouldn't be too impactful. But if he finds a solution, man, to get rid of the Wisps and then use the Scroll of the Beast, it can be great. Dispel upgrade coming. End snare upgrade coming. War Mill coming. In the meantime, we're just waiting for tier 2 for Colorful to finish. Going for the second upgrade on the Huntress. And level 4 on the Keeper. While this expansion is finally starting, only now the shop. So no clarities for this Keeper, who's very low on mana. But only one walker so far. I think that's kind of normal. Yeah, second one is coming now. And Focus is pulling oh, peons already. Creeping is natural. Maybe he wants to distract, push, and then counter expand behind it. He keeps the talisman, by the way. 
There's gonna be a lot of units for Colorful. And especially with the Moonglaives, he gets hit more often. So maybe keeping that chance of dodging is pretty nice in the end. Parry the Vitality leaves it on the ground. Uh, nope, has to step back. Tier 2 is done, so what's he doing with it? Only Huntress. The Infi approach, no Alchemist, just single hero and mass Huntress. Shadowhunter has Serpent Wards. So he's pushing into this with two... What, is he towering this up? Does he have reinforced defenses? No, he does not. And there's no towers... Ah, sneaky positioning by Focus. Love that. They have a lot of range, so they can shoot across the forest. Can he hold on to this fight for much uh, for long, though? There's so much stuff here. And the Wisps are coming in. First one sniped. Can the, the other ones connect? No, they can't. Or oh, burning the Shadow Hunter. That's so rough, man. He only has three Serpent Wards remaining. Hunters are falling, though. Scroll of the Beast being used. Protection Scroll as well. He waited until the Wisps are detonated, so now he can use it. But no Heal Wave anymore. Invo Post on the Blade Master has to use it soon. Massive amount of Snake Six. And he does good damage, but PC, uh, PCG Colorful is taking out the Kodo. Or is he? Mana Potion would be so nice on this SH, SH but no, the Kodo is gone. Blade Master uses the Invul. He's getting rid of a lot of Huntress, though. Good focus fire by focus thus far. He needs some clarities. The towers are up, and now Colorful is walking into them. But what can he do? The Blade Master, whoa, last, not the last dispel, but gets a dispel here. Still no reinforced defenses. That's a, kind of an easy kill then. With Treants especially. Oh, Shadow Hunter. Too far forward. Surrounded. No items. And the right clicks are enough. Ah, oh, poor focus. That was a mistake to move the Shadow Hunter here. When he saw that the Keeper has mana, when he saw that the Keeper was there. Colorful lost a lot, it's down to 40, uh, 34 supply, but Focus is losing the towers. Focus lost the hero. Focus lost so much mana and units as well. GG! So we're gonna have PCG versus Colorful in the round of four. That was a weird timing though, wasn't it? I mean, the expo didn't really pay off yet, so we wanted to push it uh, before maybe Glaive Throwers are coming and before the level five really is there if it wasn't. But the army was kind of lackluster, wasn't it, for focus? Hmm. Weird game, I think. I don't know. They are all a little desperate against night elves and don't really know what to do, so maybe that played into it. Our next game is going to be Sock versus Joshi, versus Joshi Shi. We take a little break here um, for just a few minutes and then we're back with King of Maps, Echo Isles, Human versus Night Elf. Looking forward to that. The B-Boy is playing. New fan favorite Sock? We'll see. Stay tuned. Into this uh, third quarter final of King of Maps, Echo Isles, Sock versus Joshi Shi. Oh, the poll is a little bugged. Haven't seen that so far. Once again, it's Korea versus China. So far, the Chinese prevailed in both matches. Uh, PCG and Colorful eliminating Chemico and Focus from the round of eight. So will Sok do better now? That's the question here. Both around 50% in that matchup. Shishi a little ahead when it comes to direct confrontations with his opponent. But yeah, let's go. In the upper left, we have Sok. And the resources are wrong again, Jesus Christ. A little cursed here. There we go, though. In the upper left, same starting position as to Miko. Will he play an Archmage? Of course he will. That sock style goes for Archmage all the time. On the other side, kill surprise. It is a Keeper of the Grove. So how will he play it compared to Colorful? It's a different matchup though, so it's hard to compare. He starts with the same creep spot, very safe one against the ogres. 
And I wonder if Sock is going for the mercenary camp immediately. That would certainly help him with the entangle or against the entangle. Thank you, um die Ecke 2 for the 313 sub. Keep up your great work. A player's forces are under attack. Um, I will. I hope I will. We try. Um, tomorrow and the day after, by the way, qualifiers for next. The second next offline tournament we're gonna have in the scene. Or the third next offline tournament? Not so sure. Somewhere in January. That's gonna be cool. A player's forces Does the new attack. overlay only work on netties? No, it works on replays, on Battle.net, and on netties. So it works everywhere. So, Lightning Shield Creep, she, she scouts this, the Acrobat, nice to see him back in the scene, same as life. So a little more influence from the Night Elves from China. Sock gets the Shadow Priest here against the Entangle, that's nice. Can he get the last hit though? That would be so important, man. It would be level 2 for the Archmage. She gets some right clicks on the Keeper, but is it enough? Oh, yes it is. Item is the Parap of Vitality. A little more harassed, but I think it's fine. Dispel is coming in to prevent that damage. And he gets the next kill on the tree and as well. Always 20 experience for the Archmage. And rises up to level 2 and a bit with this. Thank you, Lauban, for the tier 1 sub as well. Thank you for your hard-earned money. Not too many workers in the base remaining, though. He has to walk back. Is not short on Lumber, though, because he's constantly reproducing the workers. Shishi on the other side, tier 2 tech now, no second building yet. He's creeping at the same time with the archers, which I like, good usage of time. Uh, but Sock scouts this. Oh, and the first donation coming in as well, thank you, Draketen, 5 euros. I have money, you provide entertainment, I give money, and that seems fair to me. No one should ask, uh, no one should work for free. Thank you very much, man. It's half work, half fun so uh yeah but thank you very much man this seriously helps a lot so shishi continues his harass but what does it really do not too much yet there is no arcane tower so the keeper can get one or two kills here but he's already down to 50 percent while sock is using his peasants here to expand on tier one that's certainly going to be interesting since shishi was chosen the tag Oh, Militia form called? Doesn't help. So not too much gold income at the moment. He will force the town portal now. Or oh, does he have a staff? No, he doesn't. He will force the town portal now. But the keeper is level 2.3. Expo is coming up. Or is it? Five, six units pushing this. And the expo is oh, only now started. That is... Not ideal, man. That's certainly not ideal. He doesn't have much damage against these archers. Water Elemental, piercing damage only, no dust, and he uses Shadow Melt quite well. This is, of course, time for Sock to build this one. How far is Tier 2? Almost finished. Could go in with an Alchemist, then. A player's forces are <laughs> under attack. Nice comment, Sarah. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> So Keeper goes to the tavern, has the resources. And there we go, Alchemist second. This acid bomb is gonna be insane. How can he defend against this? Tier 2 is nowhere near. Reinforcements not coming in too early. He has a level 2 Archmage and now Dust, so that will help to a degree. So how much mana does he have? That's the last water elemental. One is gone already. Nice save here for now. A little healing from this one, but it's just so much damage. The expo is finished now, though, but what if he loses all his footmen? How does he defend then? First one is down. Second one is acid bomb. Third one is entangled. Tower is down as well. Oh, this is so many kills for Shishi. And not a single one for Sok. Okay, maybe now the first one. Looking good for China as well. Entangle acid bomb. The combo of 1.30, and he has to TP out now. Ay, 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 that was rough. That was certainly rough. Engine of War is moving closer to the middle of the map. 
Lores are coming. He really wants the Mountain Giants. Expo counter expansion is coming as well. Or oh, Archmage is moving in once more. And in the lack of t oh, with the lack of towers, with the lack of militia and peasants and mercenaries, how can he hold on to this level three keeper now? Uh oh, almost had an entanglement. Five mana missing, and the Archmage was in range. Shishi though playing it careful. He has no acid bomb at the moment, but right clicks if he wants to go for the entangle. Doesn't. Picks up the mercenaries first, and now militia support is coming in. Not the best timing, I guess. Since the army is healing up here, does he have a shop in the main? No, and still tier one. Under siege. Tier three on the way, and tier two for Sock has not even started. He needs a massive footman, but can he afford it? I don't know, but on the other side, Acid Bomb is so good against mass that it's also not really in a thing. Here comes the Entangle, Dispel, but damage is done. Muddy the Mud Golem is coming in, slowing the Archmage and killing it. Okay, that's one way to come back into this game. Because now there's no Acid Bomb. Now there's a lack of right-click damage and slow by Muddy. First the Alchemist kill, now this most likely the Berserker kill. That's some nice uh, value that the Mud Golem provides down. here. Good addition by Sock. Needs to get this kill though. Had to apply a th third slow. Oh, and now slow comes in from the other side. But in the end, he gets it finally. Oh, man. That was a slow torture that finally killed him. Muddy MVP. Oh, yeah. And now he has a decent footman army, he has a decent mercenary army, he has a good income, that should start the tech, yeah, it's already at uh, one third. So Shishi has the expo up, has to slow down things a little. To set up his tree of life. Claws of attack, decent. Archmage continues to level up, if he goes for caster army, of course the level 2 brilliance aura is great. Wand of Illusion and more experience. This will be level 4. And there we go. But how much damage will Shishi do now? Gets rid of the Mud Golem immediately. So rough, man. But you did a good job before. So much to spell as well. And that's the strength of Sock right now. The Water Elementals, right? And the Dryads, like, they immediately get rid of it. He doesn't even have a Blacksmith. Building it now. So no riflemen against this. And poison damage and piercing damage. The invis potion kind of wasted, I guess. As he has to heal up first. Good that Sock has a shop, but for how long is the question. Keeper holds on to his mana. Alchemist is very dry himself. Archmage here, the illusion scouts it, saw the expansion, and he knows, okay, uh... What can I do now? I'm under so much pressure. There's a gun to my head. Mountain King coming, as he can't go for the tavern for an alchemist of his own. And Shishi is on tier 3 now. And has the expo. Double lore is ready as well. Holy shit! A few sub gifts coming in by Demagos123. I think it's 10. Whew, that's pretty awesome. That is really awesome, actually. Thank you, man. And Woosh has subscribed as well. Oh, big smile on my face right now. Not a big smile on Sock's face, I can tell you that much. Mountain Giant grabs the stick. Sock can't get any kills done. At the moment, he still can shop. He has a clarity and the scroll, but no potions for him. And this opens up the way to the passant line. Sock's trying to block, and that's nice, but there's Acid Bomb and Entangle. A little bit of Dispel. Illusions used on the Ogomolo to soak up even more damage, but there's this big range army for Zhou Shishi. And he just gets the kills. Mountain King comes in now. What can he do, though? 
Level 3 for the Alchemist, who also had chop control with Inwall and Heal Scroll. And this Mountain King is just melting thanks to the Entangle and Acid Bomb and dies right away. Not a hero of war, I can tell you that much. Decent block by the Alchemist, certainly enough. Still no potion. And the human hero, first hero, falls as well. He's trying his best with Militia, but nope, this push was too strong with one Mountain King. A uh, Mountain King, Mountain Giant, and a stick, and a lot of Dryads. I think uh, Sock suffered a little too much in the early game. Took a lot of losses in the Echo. His tech was so late with this. And then there's a push. And then the push kills him. <laughs> So Chad was unfortunately wrong. And she she as the second Night Elf advances to the semifinals. He will meet another Night Elf, either Law Lyad or Sini. Law Lyad, of course, the big favorite. Once again made it to the round of eight in WGL. Sini eliminated in the group stage, but it's always fun to see Sini. Uh, that will that will be a clash of styles for sure. But yeah, so far in the semis, PCG, colorful, Joshishi. Three Chinese, one Korean could join them, that is Law Lyad. Pretty much a disaster for Korea here, so far. This is Law Lyad versus Sini, another best of one, another round on Echo Isles. Also, these two players made it to WGL, one made it to the playoffs, the other didn't. And Law Lyad was then eliminated by Focus, of course. Ah, uh, Focus, by Foggy, of course, in a great, one of the greatest Night of Mirrors that I've seen in a long time. In its best of five. And again we're cursed, man. Again I have to swap the sides. There we go. So, everything is set. Sini in the upper right with the Blade Master, as we've seen from Focus as well. Normal build here with Barracks, Shop, One Burrow, but the position is interesting, I think. A little far forward. Law Light on the other side, Keeper of the Grove. Can you explain how this overlay works? Uh, no. I have no idea. I just send out papers, what I want to have, and then uh, the programmer does all the work. <laughs> I have zero idea how it works, man. Didn't do it myself. Claws for the Keeper, Claws for Law Lyad, who is rushing over immediately to harass to keep Sini at bay. And I think that's a good idea since Sini is quite an aggressive player most of the time. And so, keeping him busy, not allowing any progress, is quite nice, even though you really need progress on your Keeper as well. There we go. Treants first, no Entangle, that's a good opening for the Blade Master here with a Speed Scroll, which he doesn't have yet, and Windwalk to do some damage, but he has to take care of his economy and workers and stuff. So no damage on this Keeper, actually. While he's creeping at the same time. Really like that. With treants and archers. Easy to do. But also a little bit extra experience for the Blade Master. Who is level 1.4 and now returns the favor, I guess, and moves over. Thank you. I am Vegas Lady 4 for the 14 month resub already. Thanks for the support over over a year. A player's forces are under attack. Grunt is coming into a wrath, maybe able to get the last hit. Let's check this one out. Nope, not going into it. Huntress transition by Law Light and an expansion on a very unusual now spot. I mean, seen. this has been seen before, but it's not here, it's not here, it's not directly here. So at the moment, Sini has no idea about this. That master is still able to creep this alone. A player's forces are under attack. Scroll of the beast. Oh, this can be good, man. There's not too much dispel in Sini's army. Almost trapping the keeper here, but there is another exit. Gets one kill. Already replacing it. Oh, block comes in from Sini. There is two more wind walks. Excuse me, one. 
There is Entangle as well, but no mana. Uh-oh, this Keeper is certainly in trouble. But he can't really reach, can he? Not getting in the backstab, and now the Keeper should be able to go to the Moonwells. And drink up to full health. Yep, looks good. So tier 2 has started as well. Expo is at 60%. This Owl prevents the expansion from being harassed too much by the Blade Master. Oh, does he see it now? He must see it now. Yeah, okay, now he does. Is he still in time? Two Huntress. Ah, oh, no. If the Grunts have to run away, which they have against Entangle, he can't continue this. And he has no Windwalk anymore. Of course, he will survive this Entangle, which will be nerfed, by the way, in the upcoming patch. At oh, Wisps around. Yep, he saw that there's no mana. He can detonate before the next mana is coming. There we go. Blade Master is trapped. No TP, no potions around. Sticks. Oh, actually not. Another Entangle, though. And that was a nice play by Lawliot. Not detonating too many Wisps, not losing too many Wisps, and getting the kill on the Blade Master. Only level one. But Wisps around. Really nice. And now what can he do? He is at tier two. So at least the SH is out. Is under siege. Serpent wards first, but yeah, there is certainly a timer now on Sini. Didn't get much done in the early. No progress on the heroes. Spirit Lodge? Okay, Shaman. It's really Shaman time. Huh. Okay, Perch against uh, Treants and Entangle, I guess. Players' forces are under attack. Oh, that's the round. That's so nice. I think he would have hoped for a lightning shield closer to this. Man, this is really cool creeping. So fast, so efficient. Not taking too much damage at all. I've not seen this before. Did you know about this? Like, Shadow melts around on the creeps? Or is it just another next level law liad creeping style? I think it's the later. Thank you, Ninjin Sin, for the 8 month resub for the 8th time. I'm very happy to announce your name here. Thanks for the great WGL coverage, also great work with the new UI. Thank you. I think so too. Pretty happy about everything at the moment. So, more Shaman. No Beastry, by the way. Sini always a little different from everyone else. A player's forces are under attack. But Keeper gets up to level 4 here. If he's not interrupted. Blade Master is back, but still only level 1. Keeper gets level 4. That's so big. Scroll of Protection being used immediately. Two claws on the Keeper as well. He has to hold on a little. Nice illusions here on the Huntress to soak up more damage. And Sini is focusing hard on the illusions. Grunts are about to fall. Heal Wave comes in. There is good piercing damage. Also good magic damage. But he just can't chew through this. Looks like the first Chinese of the day is going to lose. Blade Master level 2. Finally Critical Strike. But it looks like, like it's just looks like an overwhelming mass of Huntress here. Piercing damage is gone now. He kills two Huntress, but the Blade Master is super low. It's still revealed and does not reach for an Entangle. But this kind of exposes the Shadow Hunter. And since Laliad has oh, level 5 now, he can afford this. Absolutely can. Entangle level 2, so much damage. Can't move. Right click's coming. Uh, yeah, the Huntress are fast. The Keeper as well. Is there some kind of saving him? Oh, one more Chakram, I guess. 4 HP. It's getting close to the base, though. Shaman is coming for a purge. Sini could actually save this one. Oh, no! Last second. How unfortunate. And he called for the GG. Shadowhunter dead. And that is... Wait, did Laliad call GG? No, right, was Sini just the bug. Uh, very, very unfortunate for Sini, but lost too much. Not enough sustain. And so we have our semifinals. It's 
PCG versus Colorful, and Shishi versus Lawliot. So three elves, one... Uh, one undead remaining. Oh, and the Liquipedia, Liquipedia boys are at it again, so I can show the bracket on stream afterwards. Now again, we go into a little break. After these two games, we will be back with the first semi-final, which is going to be PCG versus Colorful China versus China, Undead versus Night Elf. Thank you very much, Siakara, for the seven-month resub for the Horde. Didn't really work today, did it? So thanks for watching and see you in a bit for the semi-final.